Hi, I'm Karen Claus. I'm with the Natural Resources Conservation Service and today we're out in the field going to do a field session for ecological sites and ecological sites. Our objectives out here in the field are really twofold and the first thing that we want to cover is just knowing where we're at on the landscape, using the tools available to us. We're going to place ourselves on the landscape and with that uh, we're going to use those tools to determine what ecological site we're actually standing on. And once we do that, that brings us to our second objective. And that objective is to now that you know what ecological site you're on, we're going to observe and discuss some various uh, measurements and parameters, things that we could do to figure out on the state and transition model where we are at, what plant community phase we're in, what state we're in. We can then take that discussion and we can turn it into a discussion of um, management and really knowing where we're at now and what our management objectives are, we can really manage or we can discuss the management of these lands based on their uses and looking at, okay, if we're not in our desired plant community, what steps would we have to take to get there or could we get there? And likewise, if we decide that we're going to manage for this plant community that we're in, then really, what are the things that we need to avoid? What are the trajectories we could be moving toward which would take us to an alternate state that we really have no desire to go to? One of the common tools for land managers, especially in this ra the rangeland and urban land settings, is soil survey. And you gotta hope that you have a soil survey. That's kind of the important part. If you have a soil survey, it, it's a great tool. If you don't, you'll probably really have to learn how to analyze your soils a lot better. For instance, here um, in the uh, you know western Wyoming environment we do have the benefit of having soil surveys in certain locations. Soil survey really aids in you know mending soils with ecological sites okay it's a really good vessel or avenue for the land manager to understand their landscape before they go out into the field and do their on the ground truth. So anyway, as you guys can see here, we're kind of in a sagebrush environment, big landscapes. Uh, rangeland mapping usually captures the big landscape picture. Uh, right here, for instance, there's two soil components. We call that a complex in the, in the uh, soil survey world. And the uh, land manager will have to be cognizant as to where they are on those soil components. So we're in the process of excavating a hole here for for soil analysis for our uh, our ecological site evaluation. The requirement is 20 inches for most ESDs. And in general, we like to look at the surface texture, which would be the top six inches, and also any subsoil root limiting layers, we call them, that may change our ecological site. And also just, look at, just looking at where the roots are going in the soil profile, is there a layer where you can see roots going horizontal. Um, anyway, we'll work on texturing the surface here and we'll also uh, poke around in the subsoil to see if there's any root limiting layers. And we always try to carry a soil knife along that kind of can show us different layers, different consistency. Here you can, you can definitely see that there's a, a change in structure about four inches below the soil surface. It doesn't really look like a root limiting layer, but uh, you know, it's, it's, it may be a change in texture. As we get lower, it looks like we get through it too. And sometimes they can be related to changes in moisture content too. Okay, so I, I can definitely see two different layers for us to sample here for our um, soil site correlation. So what we do, there's a, there's a, uh, a soil texture by field flow chart available and it's at, on the NRCS website. So you can just look that one up on the internet and that's a pretty handy tool. So this one we're going to take about, you know, maybe a couple grams of soil here and we're going to feel for grittiness. In this one, we can stop right now and say that this is a sandy soil, okay? And then we're also going to look for a ribbon. And I'm saying 
there's kind of a, a really weak ribbon. So I'm probably in the loamy then sand we'll, we'll world We'll go down there. into our next horizon. We'll do the same thing. And we'll see if there's a textural difference. Which there's not a major difference here, so you're gonna have to use caution. Okay, it, it holds together in a ball, all right? So you're at least a loamy sand. Now, does it make a small ribbon? It makes a ribbon about a quarter inch, maybe a half. So you can probably go up to a sandy loam, a very coarse sandy loam.